Hey guys, so um, I wanted to, to start this first week um, by talking about the grooming in general and I wanted to give you like an overall look of what grooming is in production, you know, and also when as a groomer we are involved to work and what are the software that we are using and also which departments are close to grooming you know because in production like it's we are all together so it's not like uh, a specific department working by working alone you know like you have to to be involved with other department so i'm gonna first start to talk with you about grooming and the grooming is basically just doing the fur the hair the feather on characters so it can be like a digi double, um, like just an haircut for a digi double, or eyebrows, eyelashes, beard, all the kind of uh, fur and hair that you can have on uh, a human asset. It can also be fur for animals or creatures. I guess the best example nowadays would be uh, to talk about the Lion King, for example, or the Jungle Book done by NPC. Uh, you definitely can see what kind of animals you can do and where the grooming is important. The third part as groomer that we may be doing sometimes would be um, grooming on fabrics and clothing such as like uh, t-shirts or sweaters or whatever you know and also props um, basically uh, like uh, a pillow for example you will need some fur on this and you if you are like a, a huge close-up you may need to ask groomer to help you on this uh, once again there is also feather so like for all the flying animals most of the time we are doing feather and also chickens or that kind of stuff something that we are doing will be also uh, environment and in s some companies such as MPC for example groomers uh, can do like the, the grass and also the instancing of the trees and that kind of stuff uh, also for example when I was at Animologic I, was, I did like a, a lot of grass shot for Peter Rabbit and yeah just like bear in mind that it's not only like doing some crazy digital balls and few animals it's like a very large department right now and you may have to, to create different stuff and to be kind of flexible uh, when you are a groomer um, that being said uh, which software are we using so in the industry that's kind of weird for now because um, Grooming is kind of recent. I mean, that uh, grooming, like now we have like a lot of groomers, but before it was just few and the software were not really ready. So a lot of companies have created their own software. Uh, for example, MPC has his own software called Fertility. Uh, Animologic is using his own software. Dine is using his own software. Framestore is using his own software. Weta also. Uh, etc etc so most of the big companies are using their own software and there are few software also in the market uh, the most famous would be uh, HM, IGS, Chevronacut, uh, Yeti, Houdini and I guess that's pretty much it uh, for, the, for the most famous there is also the Maya hair uh, system um, yeah, I guess that's that's pretty much it. Oh, Onatrix, sorry, I, I, I forgot on this one. Onatrix also is is coming, and is coming like to become a, a big thing. So those software are the main one, plus the one that uh, are property software for each companies. Um, however, you have to to know that they all are kind of based on, on the same thing. Like it's a bit like mud box on the brush, you know. If like you're good with anatomy and you know how to sculpt, uh, you can 
sculpt with ZBrush and then you will have to go to Mudbox. You will need some time, like a week or two, to, to, to be aware of the software, but once you are, you will be able to sculpt, you know. It's kind of the same with the grooming software, um, because some of them are very similar and others such as like Houdini or Yeti are based which can be a bit weird at the beginning but once you're used to them uh, honestly it's not very hard to to start grooming with them uh, once you you know how to groom um, well uh, now uh, I wanted to just give you a quick um, quick overview also about uh, which department are working with us and the first thing is uh, grooming as I said is a new department kind of new department and in some companies the grooming can be um, mixed up with modeling in some company grooming will be mixed with uh, CFX in some other companies grooming will be with texturing and look dev and in other companies, grooming will be alone, its own department. So for now, they don't really know where to put grooming exactly. If it's under asset department, under creator department, and we are kind of like working with a couple of different departments because we basically are receiving the modeling and we are doing a first pass, a first grooming pass, and it's important with the modeling, you know. So we are starting at the beginning of the production and we also are going to deliver this fur asset to the texturing department, the look dev department, but also the, um, the, the CFX department, the technical animation department. And so that means that we are basically receiving from one department and we are delivering to many departments. And we can, we, the problem with the grooming is that can have a lot of issues with how you build your groom for texturing and how you build it for the CFX. So you have to, to be very flexible and to understand also different departments if you want to be a good groomer. So you will understand what are the needs of the texturing department, what are the needs of the look dev department and what are the needs of the technical animation department. Uh, with this, you will be able to face all the problems, or most of them, and you will be able to deliver a very professional groom. And that's the most important thing to my point of view. So yeah, just bear in mind that in production, you're, you're never just one department. You're one department in the middle of a lot of them, and you will have to deliver your asset to different departments. And I will show you in my process, in my way to work, how to avoid as much as you can a lot of errors or problems that the other department can have after you deliver your asset. And yeah, so now I'm gonna just quickly talk to you about what we're going to see during the, the next week. So this week, I'm just gonna show you um, the basics of egg gem and grooming. I will show you how to set up your references, how to interpret your references, and I'm gonna show you how to to start with egg gem, what's important, the naming convention, how to to think of your UVs, how to uh, to set up your different models and everything. And also I'm gonna show you in the second time the different um, tools inside HN and the different buttons so you will be able to have like a, a big overview of the general software and how to start with grooming and during the next week we are going to do a human haircut that you will choose uh, I'm gonna do my haircut more or less and if we have time I'm also going to do some eyebrows eyelashes and beard just to, to to give you a quick overview of how to do to do it and the week after like uh, three weeks after so week four we will probably start doing an animal so once again i'm going to show you how to set up your reference for animals 
or creators and we are going to to do one from scratch to the end probably with a different process uh, I'm gonna try to to show you different process of grooming so you will be able to choose the one that you like the most and at the end of the, the, the course I also want to give you some quick look of Yeti and just to show you how if you have to do a groom with Yeti uh, how to, to set up your Yeti stuff and how to, to start working with Yeti but I'm sure that after those seven weeks when you will start the, the week eight and you will start seeing the, the Yeti stuff you will just need to understand how Yeti works and then you will be able to reproduce what we've seen during the seven weeks before and you will be able to apply it to, to Yeti and doing an amazing groom with, with it so keep your motivation up and let's start.